Not everyone can afford expensive art supplies, but I believe creativity is inside all of us, no matter what supplies we use. So I challenge myself to create with basic dollar store art supplies to see if this is true. I went to a local Dollar Tree and I was actually quite impressed with the selection of art supplies they carried. They had paintbrushes, stencils, and sponges, different types of paints like acrylic, watercolors, and tempera, spray paints, and even acrylic-based markers, which I love to use. But the big question was, are they decent quality? Can I actually create with them? I chose a few paints, some sprays, and a few markers, as well as some craft supplies like stickers, rub-ons, and, and a craft product that I didn't think they would sell at the dollar store, but more on that later. I immediately went home as I couldn't wait to test them. I start testing the markers first. Like with any acrylic-based marker, you should press and hold the tip until the paint reaches the pointed nib. I am quite surprised with the quality as the colors are bright and the marker goes on very smoothly. I love acrylic markers, so I can't wait to try them over other products in my mixed media page. I also try the glittery dual color markers and they're also very smooth and quite gorgeous to write with. They would be perfect for journaling. And since I have my art journal beside me, I take the blue glitter marker and journal inside my page. Next, I try the sprays. These colors are gorgeous and I start spraying them and notice how thick they paint is. It is very chalky and I'm not really sure if I like it at this point, as the paint looks thick and very goopy. And I felt that maybe this was a waste of money. Although I could use them as paints with a brush like I'm doing here. Well, you will soon see how I prove myself wrong and the sprays ended up being my favorite product of them all. Finally, I test the paints and realized that I didn't only buy acrylic paints. I bought some oil paints and some tempera paint as well. And they're all quite liquidy and translucent, which I'm not sure how they will look on my actual journal. But before I test the paints on my spread, I want to create texture on the background. And I couldn't believe what I found. They were selling one of Heidi Swap's products. It's a set of textured alphabet letters that probably cost a lot of money back in the day. And now they're selling it at a discounted price. I pick some letters from the stack and start arranging them across my page. I even cut some in half so they can fit better. And then I use gel medium to glue them. I didn't buy the gel medium at the dollar store. Unfortunately, gel medium is one of those products that you cannot substitute as good quality gel is important. You can use regular glue to stick the collage to the background, but sealing them is the main issue because when you add paint on top, you wanna to make sure that they don't get ruined as they're made out of paper. You can use a cheaper gel like Mod Podge, but it was the only product that I couldn't compromise on. The letters give a much needed texture to the background as not only it creates a pattern, but they also have a dotted texture and you can use any ephemera product here as well. Once the gel medium is dry, I give it a coat of white gesso. And this is the type of product that you can easily substitute by making your own gesso at home with products that you can buy at the dollar store like cornstarch or baby powder. And I will link my homemade gesso recipe video at the end so you know how to do it as well. However, I didn't have any of my homemade gesso at hand, so I used regular white gesso instead. Once the gesso is dry, it is time to test the paints. I start with the turquoise paint and add it onto the edges with my paintbrush. Then spray some water on it and let it round down the page. I'm not particularly happy with the results. The paint is blotchy and very translucent, so you can see the strokes and it doesn't blend properly. At this point, I'm worried but I decide to continue and add some of the spray paints onto my background as they're more opaque. I love how the colors mix together and I spray more water so the colors can blend. Then I decide to add the dark blue using a paintbrush, the same way I had done with the turquoise. I add some blue paint into a small disposable cup so I don't have to dip my paintbrush back and contaminate the paint. I also dilute the paint with a lot of water to water it down. 
By now, with so many wet layers of paint, the blue mixes so beautifully with the other colors, and the paint looks very thick. I end up pouring the blue paint at the edge and let it run down the page even more. If you notice, I put a baby wipe in the middle of the journal so it doesn't seep through the cracks. Then I take the lime green spray again and spritz it over the blue. And this is when I fall in love with the sprays. Since they're so thick, when they mix with the blue paint, they start creating a marbleized effect as they're running down the page. And it looks like a faux paint pour. It actually looks so amazing. It reminds me of an under the sea scenery, which is one of my favorite types of sceneries to create. I do the exact thing on the other side, following the same steps, and then use the leftover blue to create paint splatters on the background, as well as spritzing some more lime green splatters. At this point, I leave and let my background air dry, as I want the paint to remain this way. It takes a few hours to dry, but when I come back, the background still looks amazing. And I take the flower rabbons I bought and start adding them around my page. The gold touches look gorgeous. I try to add them over the dark blue area so they can be seen better. Then I start adding the leaf rabbons, and these look even more beautiful because they also add movement. Once I add enough leaves, I take my gold acrylic paint marker and start pouncing it over my page. I hold it very loosely in my hand so it bounces back and forth. I love this technique as it creates organic looking splatters over my background. I also use the marker to create gold vines across the page, connecting the leaves to the edges as if they were growing out of the ends of the page, which enhances the movement even more. And it looks absolutely gorgeous. I love how well the markers work on the background, even on top of the paint, which makes me feel good about the money I saved, as a regular acrylic marker is $5 to $10 in an art store, and this one is only a dollar. Of course, I don't end up using all the paint colors and markers because that would be too many on one page, but I'm sure I will use them in the future because I'm quite pleased with the quality. I do grab the glitter gold marker and journal a few sentences. And I also dilute the white paint with water and using a small brush, I add splatters over the background. Once those are dry, I rub on the word belief from another one of the rub on set and then stick three butterflies on my layout. These are actually wall decals that I found in the dollar store as well. It always amazes me that we can create beautiful art with inexpensive products like those from the dollar store or like the art I created in these videos right here with things from around the house like tea, cotton, or even making my own gesso with baby powder. It just goes to show that art comes from the heart no matter what supplies you use.